Hey guys, Christy here, DPC Technology, back again to share with you some of my tips and tricks for using Outlook to be more productive. Uh, Outlook can be overwhelming sometimes, especially if you get a lot of emails throughout the day, which I do. So these are some tips of how to organize your Outlook a little bit better and just save you time overall. The first thing I wanna go over are signature templates. This is one I just started using recently this year. If you're sending out a lot of emails um, over and over, like, for example, for me is when I add a new employee and I need to add them to our insurance plan, I email our insurance agent and say, hey, I hired somebody, can you add them to our insurance plan? I always have to just write that from scratch. They take me a while and I may mess them up. So a good idea is to just set that as a signature template. It's kind of a weird workaround because it's a signature that Outlook is adding to your email, but it's really the body of your email. We have automatic signatures and set up in our uh, well, Active Directory. I'm not exactly sure that's a little too nerdy for me, but it automatically adds a signature at the end of our email. So you won't see my signature when I write the email, but you will uh, see that I'm adding a fake signature, which is actually the body of the email. And then my signature will automatically add at the end of that through our email system. So I'm gonna go click here and say new email and pretend I'm gonna email Clay and I'm gonna say up here where it says signature, this, this is a list of all the templates that I've made. If I wanted to make a new one, I would just click signatures and I would say new and I would say um, lunch invite or something. You know, if you invite people to lunch a lot or you know, it's the same thing that you wanna do all the time. And then you could just type it in here and add that as a new signature. But for this scenario, I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna, I think a good example was that uh, new employee. So first day new employee, there you are, get your response, we're gonna set you up to start, bring your headphones, bring your driver's license, bring your social security card, and we're gonna set you up in ADP. And then I just, uh, all I have to do is that. And I may go in here and change, hey, no, this guy's working from seven to four. He's gonna start in Jacksonville, whatever. I change that and send it. I could have a Jacksonville one, I could have several different templates, but this basically just gets it done for me really quickly. I click send and we're done. So that has saved me a lot of time and I think it's a great tip for just common emails that you send. Like I said, I'm gonna have a pretty picture down here after I send it, but there it is. Beautiful signature and pretty email and that's exactly how I wanted to look. Now let's move on to my next time-saving tip. It's called the stack method. So if you Google stack method, you'll see there's some videos on exactly how to use this process. But one of the ideas is I'll come in and I'll have 50 emails in my inbox. Some I don't need to deal with right away, like invoices or bills that um, I don't have to pay right away, but I need to set some time aside to go through them and pay them or to add them into my QuickBooks. So setting up folders that you're gonna go back to and work on later. So if you see down here on my left-hand side, I have bills to add to QuickBooks. And so I have nothing, I've cleaned out my email inbox so you don't have to see how much craziness is in there right now, but I'll drag them over here so you can see in here, you'll see like all my bills that I need to add to QuickBooks. And then I just set aside time and I go through and add those into Something I just started doing too, automate recurring tasks. So let's say you always come in and delete this email from Marty. So I get this email and it, it, I, it's great information. I want to have it, but I don't need it in my inbox right in my face. So that's where rules come in hand. So here I would say I would create a rule and you could say, hey, if it's an email that says pay your bill, I don't want to pay your bills. No, that example. But if it was something like that or Something that you just always want to just go ahead and move to your deleted items or maybe you want to move it to my bills item or so let's say I need to pay my bills so I'm going to go down to my bills to add to QuickBooks section so I could just say every time something says add this bill just go bills to add to QuickBooks that would help clean out things and just a little bit of that overwhelm when you log into your email in the morning and there's just hundreds of emails and, it, and it, you just start your day off wondering how am I going to get through all this my next tip is turning off desktop notifications. And this probably should have been my first tip. I don't know how I ever got through life before when I had them on, but you know, when you get emails, I think the default on Outlook, or it has been at times, is to pop up a little uh, window on the right hand corner that says, you just got an email. And so you'll be working through your day and you're really working hard on a task. And all of a sudden you get this pop up and you're like, ooh, email, squirrel, you know? and you can't get your stuff done. I just can't, I can't work like that. It, it messes up my productivity. So I've turned those notifications off and I set time aside for when I'm gonna go through emails. Let me show you how to do that. So if we go file, the top for Outlook, and then go to options, and then under mail, 
down here where it says message arrival. So there's options to play a sound, there's options to change your mouse, there's options to show an envelope. That's what used to happen all the time is I'd see a little envelope icon in the taskbar or display a desktop alert as well where that pops up. <clears throat> I have that all turned off here. There is a workaround if there are some, if there's somebody that you do want to get alerted from like, hey, every time I get an email that says this subject or from this person, then you can set rules. That's another tip that I have on here is about rules, but we'll go over for this one specifically a workaround on the alerts. So you can go up here to rules, create a rule, and then you can say when I get a message and you can change all these, uh, if it has a certain subject, if it's was sent to a certain person, then do the following. In this scenario, I would say, uh, you could say play, play a sound, you could move it to a folder. Those are different rules, but I would say play a sound or display it in a new item alert window. So that way you can be alerted when you get certain emails, um, instead of just turning them all off completely. Cause maybe, you know, if I get an email from Clay, I want to make sure that I see that. Not really, I'm just kidding. I do, I do. <laughs> but that's how you can work around it and get maybe a VIPs emails or something like that, that you need to see. My next tip is, I already kind of said this, but it's to set a time and day of the day to check through your emails. So turn off your notifications and just set a, aside a time and stick to it. It's, it's a routine. It's what I call my uh, daily startup routine at work. And I have like five different things I do. One is cleaning off my actual physical desk and the other is cleaning out my email. I have it at the beginning of the day for an hour and at the end of the day for an hour. That might be overkill for you. It's whatever works for you, but that's part of what I call my ideal work week. I get all the, these tips from um, a book that I read called Free to Focus by Michael Hyatt. It's a great book about organizing your day. And I think it's awesome to just set aside time um, in the morning and the afternoon, clean out your email, clean off your desktop and just have a clean slate when you come in. It's also a little bit of a, you know, back in the day, the book, uh, four hour work week, he talked about uh, setting aside time to check emails so that he could maybe go surfing or do something fun and say, I'm going to be back at two and I'll check emails then. Um, he actually would set up in his signatures. These are the times that I check my emails so that nobody would get mad that he didn't immediately respond. Um, so he had an automatic response that said, I'm going to check my emails from two to three. If you don't hear back from me at that point, you know, now you can get mad, but um, please don't get mad at me because I'm enjoying my life or just getting other work done that you had to set aside. So I, I definitely recommend setting aside a certain time of the day to go through your emails and clean out your inbox and using these methods um, should help you clean those up a little bit. By the way, we're going to put links to all of the books I'm mentioning down in the description so you guys can look them up and uh, add them to your Kindle and check them out. So the next tip that I have is similar to what I just said, but uh, no meeting time blocks. Um, in your Outlook, that's what you can do on your schedule. Mine syncs with some other productivity stuff that I do. In your schedule here, mine is crazy. I'm sorry, this is why I have to have productivity stuff to help me organize all of the things. Hi, Sketch. Come on, buddy. Gotta get his cameos in. Scheduling time to block off the day that you're not gonna have meetings. Like these, this is my, Michael Hyatt calls it backstage time. So mine is normally on Tuesdays, even though it looks like on my Tuesday coming up, I've got some stuff going on, but it's usually stuff I can move off. It's nothing hard scheduled. This is my backstage time. This is when I'm gonna work on processes or you know how can I make my work better? It's more of that backstage. So, you know, if you're, they say like if you're a salesperson on stage time, you know, you're in front of a client, you're um, at a networking event. Uh, backstage time is, you know, how can I improve my quoting, stuff like that. So that's the on stage backstage. So basically block off some time that you're not going to have meetings. No one can schedule a meeting with you. This is my time to really work on stuff. Deep dive backstage time. How to make sure people are getting your emails. So there's a feature in Outlook that you can use to make sure to try to set an importance to your email and it will you probably see them sometimes when you get an email it'll have like an exclamation point behind it or something um, this is just a little bit of an added feature to make sure that you people see your email and that if you're sending something important they don't miss it or scroll past it basically let's go in here i'm going to send an email and i'm going to go to clay again poor guy he's getting all the emails just pay your bill and say I've attached this bill. I'm gonna click over here where the, this exclamation point is, high importance, 
that's really it. It's, it's simple, but I forget to do it sometimes. And maybe if I don't hear back from the first time, second time, I'm gonna remember to do high importance and click send on that email. My next tip is similar to this, but it's delivery receipts. So what happens is when you send an email, you get a receipt back that says, hey, uh, Clay got your email. So when you send it, you'll just know that they got it. They can also say they don't want you to get a read receipt. So it's not bulletproof, but it's just another way to say, hey, this is an important email. I wanna make sure you got it. And we're gonna say options. And then we say request a delivery receipt or request a read receipt. Delivery receipt is just gonna say, yeah, we sent him that email. Read receipt is gonna show that he read it. I have another video about encryption, but I just wanted to mention it here too. Uh, another tip is if you're sending something sensitive. So if you are sending maybe some bank information or things that you don't want a bad guy to steal, you should send it encrypted. Also for medical information, patient health and privacy information, you wanna make sure all of that is encrypted when you send it. You do have to have encryption, encryption set up on your email account. We have that through our Office 365 tenant. Here we go, I just got my uh, delivery receipt to Clay. But yeah, back to encryption. So if you wanna send an email with some private information, you just wanna make sure no one else sees this. You're gonna to wanna to go here, send an email, and click at options again, and then there's this encrypt button. So I have that encrypt button because we have encryption set up on our account. If you need help with that, we can help you, but showing you how I use it. So I have all these options, encrypt only, do not forward, dental PC confidential and dental PC confidential view only. These are rules that were set up in our tenant and that's why they automatically show up there. But I could just say encrypt only and it says up here, encrypt only, this message is encrypted, recipients can't remove encryption, permission granted by me. What's gonna happen, you can watch my other video, but what's gonna happen is they're gonna have to log in to see that email. It won't just show up in their inbox like normal. So they, they log into a portal to see that email. That is encryption. And my next is delay delivery. I don't use this one a lot, but I know some people that do. I actually know some people that have it set up as a rule in all their emails is delay delivery. And that is a great tool if you find yourself sending emails maybe in haste and you want to recall it. So normally if you send an email and you don't have any of these rules set, once you click send, it's sent. There's not a lot you can do to get that email back. So if you sent something incorrectly or you know you were hastily sending something and then later you thought, ah, I didn't really say that the way I wanted to say it. Or you sent to the wrong person. That's happened to me before a long time ago where I accidentally sent you know something to the wrong person and I wanted to recall it and it was, it was over at that point. So it is nice to have the option to delay. So up here, same thing, you're gonna to go to options, delay delivery, and you can say in here, however, how much you wanna wait. The only thing that's not great about it is you, sometimes people say, I just sent you the email, and it's like, well, it's taken 15 minutes for it to get here. Well, that's because they have delay delivery set. But there's also uh, ways on here where you can say, hey, I, want, I don't wanna send this email now. I wanna send this email next Tuesday or this afternoon. Um, so you can set times when you want this email to be sent. I think that's pretty cool too. I don't use that one a lot. Like I said, it's just, this isn't one I always use, but I've heard of uh, CEOs and stuff that like to just have a, a little delay just in case they sent something to the wrong person or change their mind on an email and didn't want to send it after all. So that's delay delivery. All right, guys, that's it for my Outlook tips and tricks. I hope that you found at least one of these useful. I think they will help you save you a lot of time in the long run. Everybody's got their different flavor and what works for them. So just test out what you like and what you don't like. If you guys have any tips or tricks, because I'm sure you do, add those down in the comments below because I'd love to hear them and try them out myself. Also, if you just want to see me do some more videos, you're over Clay's face. Just kidding. Love you, Clay. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe below and we'll see you in the next video.